installment in the Shore Trooper Bandit. Uh, oh, excuse me, pardon me, um, magazine pouch carrier thing. I've been recently informed by a member of the 501st Mud Troopers Builders group whom I applied to join their Facebook um, page so that I could share this particular series with because I figured it would be a good resource for, for, for people who were wanting to build either a short trooper or a mud trooper costume. I've been informed that this is not a bandolier. How dare I? No, in fact, a bandolier can only be considered a bandolier if it has bullets that go along the length of the ammunition belt, which, uh, as I pointed out, an ammunition belt technically is should be something that's uh, linked ammunition that's generally fired from an open bolt machine gun. That was my distinction, though. Of course, he didn't say that. But, um, you know, I, I pointed out the confusion comes from the fact that uh, once upon a time, um, there were semi-automatic weapons and sometimes bolt-action weapons that, that fired ammunition that was loaded with stripper clips. So while once upon a time, yes, you did have your individual bullets loaded in the bandolier, there are also leather belts and or pouches that held ammunition that would ordinarily be loose on stripper clips and those also became known as bandoliers and so when I was researching, trying to find where to purchase one of these, a lot of times they get called bandoliers on eBay and Places like that. So, forgive me, forgive me. I know accuracy is very important for some people, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just wanted to help show people how they could possibly make their own one of these or something. So, um, magazine pouch. Please, don't hold it against me that I called it a bandolier, even though lots of people do. Anyway, as I said last time, um, I was going to be disassembling this particular item, and I wanted to show you what one looks like disassembled. And then we will provide you with various measurements and things of that nature. And eventually, maybe by the fourth episode, I'm thinking, because there's a lot to go through on this one, um, I will actually go through the process of making the patterns. I'm still a little unsure as to what the best methodology is for that, because um, I 
I'm going to probably have to tack out the leather onto either a piece of foam core or uh, yeah, more than likely poster board and then do the tracings that way. Um, and of course, hey, at any time something can and will go wrong, so, you know, clarity may ensue. Anyway, first thing that I did when I went to disassemble is I started with the top part here. And uh, let me see if I can get that closer. All right. I, I, I realized last time that I cut this part off when I was filming. Sorry about that. Um, but this part always kind of fascinated me because I, when I realized it was all one piece of leather, I thought, man, that's got to be tricky. I wonder how I did that. Well, I took a seam ripper to it. And this is what came out of it. It almost reminds me like uh, something you see on a shoe, on, you know, like where the toe area is. But in fact, it's this is the neat thing about leather working, is that your patterns are made to come together in a three-dimensional way that's unlike a lot of different other, other types of crafts. So it's a little bit like origami or, or something like that, where you have a, there's a real art to it. And how they figured it out in the first place that this equals this, I have no idea. But that's that's quite ingenious. And basically what what's done on this one is the two side tabs here get folded in. And they get punched on the end of this piece here. And then they get sewn together along these along these ridges, and then this tiny little piece of the flange there, right there, that's the part that gets sewn across the top there. So that was cool. Um, of course, the pull tabs also come off. These are designed to work with the um, what do they call these? Not a barrel stud, but um, it's a particular type of stud. Rounded stud, I believe is what it is. And I talked about that last time. That's these, I kept calling them Chicago snaps. They're not the Chicago snaps, <laughs> obviously. They're um, barrel, or not barrel studs. They're rounded studs. And they're designed to go on there like that, and friction holds it together. So. First two pieces I disassembled were this, and then I removed the tab, and there were a total of four tops to the magazine pouch, and four pull tabs. And uh, once again, these are just small little pieces of leather that have been cut, and you can't see it really clearly, but there's uh, stitching holes that have been punched here, 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 and those are made to line up with holes that have been punched here as well. Now I'm thinking this is going to be interesting when it comes time to try and put one of these together. Because if your holes don't line up, you're kind of screwed. So I'm just, I'm not a leather worker. I'm just, I'm just starting to get into to leather craft. Um, I, I got a kit for Christmas for my wife that I'm going to be messing around with to help me learn the ins and outs. But I do know that there are punches that you can get that set the the uh, spacing to a particular distance for things like this. But man, when it comes to like making sure that this and this line up, that's nothing compared to what happens later on. <laughs> When you get into actually disassembling the uh, magazine pouches, because there you've got layer upon layer upon layer of leather that all has to be lined up. So I'm thinking when it, you know, my first couple of tries of this, of making some uh, replicas of this, is going to probably be with pleather 
because it's going to be a heck of a lot easier to just hand stitch um, as opposed to punching and stitching because there's a whole there's a whole technique to that. Um, some people will use a, um, a sewing machine with a special leather um, needle. Other people use what's called a buck, um, like a buck horse. I think is what it's called. It's it's a thing that's it's it stands up about like this tall, and it clamps the leather of whatever you're working in, and then you can go and you can stitch it and stitch it and stitch it. Um, I might have to build one of those sooner or later, but for now, we'll just just bear in mind that um, this is not. This is not a novice necessarily uh, level task, okay? Um, the, the good thing is, is once we get the patterns made, you know, you can probably make a couple of these for the same price as you would pay to buy one or and, and have it shipped to you. So you might be able to save some money that way. Especially if you're gonna be doing like a fan film or something where you have to outfit, say more than one um, short trooper or mud trooper. And this is this is kind of one of the impetuses that I had with this, is the idea of, you know, there's a lot of really good fan films out there uh, with Stormtroopers. Uh, there was one that just came out that was really really well done. But but uh, you know the the idea of having um, stunt level armor and stunt level pieces that don't have to don't have to necessarily be perfect up close, but can be pretty darn good. Or at least passable, um, you know. This is going to give you the information you need if you want to just make some quick and dirty ones, or if you want to make uh, what I call a hero level one, which is going to be something that looks good up close and at a distance. But um, you know, that's that's really kind of one of the, the things that I was thinking when I thought about doing this. Is you know, let's say you wanted to have a platoon of short troopers. Uh, this, this could get expensive. Now you could get people to volunteer and then they, they bring their own stuff, that's fine. But uh, some of the best Star Wars fan films that I've seen, one of the best ones, I forget what it was called, but uh, the, the, entire, the entire cast handmade their Stormtrooper armor from cardboard. And as they went on through the, 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 the movie, it, it took on a more of a gritty and, and roughed up look. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, it's not screen perfect for the rest of the, the Star Wars universe, but it really looked good on this one movie. So that's, you know, I try and provide the information so that you can use it however you want to. But anyway, let's move on. So we've covered this part and pull tabs. Let's go on to... The Euler pouch. This one is pretty straightforward. As I said before, you've got kind of a rounded rectangle, single piece that includes the back of the pouch and the flap. And this is a Chicago snap. Okay, and it's meant to mate with that end of the Chicago snap. Now, when you're working with real leather, what you would do is you would you would take this with the measurements that I'm going to eventually provide, or the pattern, and it would actually be quite a bit wider, okay, because you leave yourself some extra when you're, um, stupid dog, when you're going to be uh, molding leather, uh, than when you're, you're using just regular pieces of leather together. I mean, you're always going to have a little overlap so that you can you can make your your sew, sewing um, borders, you know, uniform, and then you trim the leather down. That's just a common thing. You trim it and then you burnish it. Burnishing is a process by which they treat the edges, uh, usually with wolf water and some sort of friction tool, like a, a piece of bone, or they make plastic ones for Dremels. It just gives it that nice kind of. Um, dark and smooth edge as opposed to being frayed from the uh, suede side of the leather. So, as I mentioned last time, what you would do for this is you would take 
um, what they call a buck, which would be a piece of wood that's basically that shape, okay? You could also do it by just actually using um, the, the oiler can that comes in it and put that in there and wet it down, but the common way of doing it for like, you see it for uh, like handcuff cases and things like that, um, the way to do it is they take the piece of leather, it's flat, and it's in this shape, it's a little extra around there, and you have one part of it that's, that's um, a uh, piece of wood, or it could be ceramic, I guess, or plastic, and you drape this over it. You wet it down, and then you have another piece that is, is uh, only covers the edges here and allows this part to be up uh, and free. So it kind of fits together like that, only the, the part on top stays open for this. And at that point, you probably want to make sure that you've already put your little snap on there, but that's neither here nor there. As long as you do it before you before you sew it up, you'll be okay. So anyway, what they would do is they, they wet the leather down, and then they clamp it in this mold, and they leave it there until it dries. And when it dries, it takes on this shape. And that's how they do that. Then what they'll do is they'll trim it, trim the excess, they'll put it together here, and this is where, this is why you, you, you don't trim the excess until the end, because it'd be really hard to line up both sides. So then line up the sides, stitch it all together, put your snap up here, probably the easiest part of the entire thing. Oh yeah, I forgot. While you're doing that, you're going to, what, did I lose it? I don't know, I did Well, maybe I lost one of them. Uh, before you before you put that together, you're going to probably want to put the little tabs on the back. Now remember this this piece goes on the back of the short trooper armor. Now I mentioned it goes on the little skirt thing. I didn't mean the comma. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the the little armor skirt that's like the hip protection. This goes on the back of it. So you may, you, you, you may definitely want to include uh, some, some sort of strap on the back like that so that you can find a way to affix it to the back there. there. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. You could actually, if you wanted to, you could use some of these snaps, put that on your armor, put one of those type of a holes in the back of this because nobody's going to see it. It's not really going to be meant to be opened and then just close it up, boom, done. But, there should be two of these. Uh, I'll figure out where the other one went later. It's not really pertinent to this right now. Now, this is the straps that it came with. The only place where you might want to pay close attention to this part here, if you're going to do a mud trooper, the mud troopers do have straps that are going across the armor. Okay? So, you know, just pay attention to that. Um, so you don't necessarily want to just discard these. But if you're doing a short trooper, you're going to end up uh, cutting these down to a certain degree so that you can use them to uh, secure the bandolier to your side. Um, but uh, you just rip the seams out. Now this, this, this is where it gets a little complicated, as I showed in the past. Okay. These... D rings here, you'd think that, oh, look, I can unsnap that and then the D ring will 
I'll be able to unsnap this and no, this is sewn together. Um, when I do make one of these, I'm gonna I'm gonna remedy that. Um, I'm probably going to include some kind of a Velcro or something like that so that it doesn't. So you can be able to remove it from this D-ring easily, depending on what you want to do or what I want to do with it. I mean, the only reason I would really um, make a 100% reproduction of this is just to do it. Because if you're going to be doing a, the, the short trooper, you don't necessarily need these. But what you do want to have is you want to have these snaps on the back, though. Okay? See this? This snaps and unsnaps. And that you can use to help secure the, uh, the pouch to your side. Um, I'm not, you know, 100% sure how I would do that because I don't have the short trooper armor at this point. But I can see a usefulness for that. Also, uh, I know people that, uh, I, I have a friend of mine who happens to be in a Mandalorian Mercs that got one of these from me. I could see these looking really cool on a Mando uh, costume. And uh, so, yeah, you, you know, always being able to have straps that you can attach to belts is a good thing to have. But, for the most part, I, you know, this is a one inch by 47, I think, inches long, give or take the the ends that I've ripped the seam out of, uh, pieces of leather. And uh, do with it what you will. Now, this part gets a little tricky because when I was trying to remove it from here, these things are really, really well fastened on there. I mean, I really, I took, I took a hammer to it, uh, you know, in order for me to totally remove that, you know, I'm trying not to rip the leather out there. Also, you want to keep in mind, um, once, you, once you've torn out all of the magazine pouches, we'll get back to this, but, um, or we can just cover it right now. This is the, the, what it looks like without the magazine pouches on it, still with the uh, area on the back there with uh, the straps. But also, um, you're going to want to pay attention to this. You have more of those rounded studs that are used to click on like that. Okay, so before you put your magazine pouches on, you're going to want to make sure that you have this setup done. Okay, however you're going to fix it. And you're going to want to make sure that you have these um, rounded studs in place. Okay. Now there's stitching all the way around this thing, top and bottom, and there's three lines of stitching here. This is where it got interesting because I thought I had figured it out that this right here was one was one piece. And this one was one piece, and then there was a, a bigger piece here in the middle that made up these two that was sewn here and sewn here. Not so. What I discovered was that the edge that holds the the um, rod, the cleaning rod here on the end, this one right here. This is actually two separate pieces of leather, okay? Whereas, like the top, um, you know, like the top of the magazine pouch that goes like that, and it forms out of one piece, the middle part, yes, it does that similarly too. See where it folds in, folds in, folds over, like that. See, it, it, the, for the middle part of the magazine pouch, it follows that. For the outside, it, it does not. The outside is kind of strange. Um, and I didn't really realize this at the time. 
but uh, you've got this one here on the far left side if you're looking this way or on the far right side you know depending on how you're facing it okay this part also does have that configuration okay and it also has this little area here that helps with uh, keeping the dust and the dirt out okay but this side right here has two different pieces so that part goes on the outside edge okay but then this piece here attaches to it and gets sewn on like that so see uh, this is separate and it, it gets sewn on there and the flange that's on the end of this piece here folds over like the one that's on the other part and then you sew those together now it's probably not that easy to see but that's you've got the little flange here goes to this part here okay and then they sew it together that's on the end these pieces need to be sewn on first is how it appears because the middle ones are sewn over the top of the inside seam on both of those okay so This is where it gets tricky when it comes to how you're going to do it with the uh, with the stitching, because let's see, this one goes on this side. This part here is going to go on top of this one, okay, and then there'll be stitching here down the middle. And then this part here will go over the top of this one, like that, okay? And then, so when you're doing it, this connection on this side here, and this connection on this side here, you're going to be going through two layers of leather. Um, and just to get to the backing, so that's three layers of leather, once you get to this, and this is a very sturdy piece of leather. It's not as soft as the other ones. Could you make it softer? Sure, why not? I don't think it's really going to matter that much. Um, you're not going into battle in, you know, the Balkans or anything with this. You know, it's it's part of your costume. Um, so yeah, you can you can choose a softer piece. It's just that uh, for you know a military purpose, they needed these to be really sturdy so that the magazines wouldn't flop. It wouldn't flop over, and the magazines would be easier to take in and out. So once you get the outer edges sewn on like that and like this, on, what is it? Yeah, uh, on this side plus this other edge that's on this side for the uh, cleaning rod. Because remember, on the outside edges, you're going to have this to keep the dust out, the dirt out. And then the, the middle part, these flanges will, will protect it. Um, then it's going to be just a matter of, uh, of sewing the thing together and placing your your D-rings however you want to do it. Um, make sure that you have these snaps because these snaps are what the, the short trooper armor people are putting on their armor so that they can actually 
put holes in these and 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 uh, mount it with the proper um, if you look at it's not just mounted directly to the armor there's there's a, a strap that goes in the front and there's another strap that goes in the back so that's what you're going to be using this for but that's pretty much it as far as uh, how it looks um, and what the basic function of each part is now I did take measurements of a fully assembled one and the reason why I did that is if you wanted to try and make one that just cosmetically looks like this um, rather than do all of these pieces uh, what I would call maybe a stunt version where things don't open if you want to make it out of warbler or something like that it's gonna have I'm, I'm gonna have the uh, the sizes of the leather how far this is from here how long this is you know I'll include that but I'm also going to do measurements of each of these I'll include those in the next video because this one's gone plenty long the uh, the fourth episode will include the measurements of an assembled one and the measurements of the disassembled one and from there I will go about putting together making the, the templates so that uh, I can make those available for people that want to make them from scratch but that's it for today and um, I hope you enjoyed this one I know it's a little longer than most of them but uh, I wanted to cover as much information as I could so uh, yeah I'll see you next time